everybody and welcome to a special one-off Wags's Wings episode number 17 I believe um, yeah really racing through years sorry it's been a, a while um, I thought it'd be nice to come back and look at an aircraft I used to have a lot of problems with the SE5 uh, bringing in some of the wisdom that um, I've learnt energy fighting and actually it's a very nice aircraft I was the problem as was always the case but it is quite a tough aircraft to fly one of the hardest but a real pleasure to master um, just to get started, when you're practicing, for some reason this plane um, by default is always equipped with bombs. So uh, before you start practicing this aircraft, make sure they're not on there. Annoying, I know. Now, the first biggest problem with the SE5 is the fact that the elevator um, is set by default at a way by which the nose will always come up. So make sure you set those um, response curves. I've got a separate video on this. This is my settings and this will keep the plane uh, level. Um, the other thing you need to do is set a control for the stabilizer. You can see here I have my little quadrant here and I have an axis for it. So that's the stabilizer for the elevator. Now as I wiggle that you can see that it moves the entire tailplane up and down and that's very important when we uh, begin our dive and I'll explain it in a second. So the biggest problem with the SE5 as far as I can see it, at least for me, is those wings. Um, they fall off a lot, um, particularly for me. This is quite typical of what used to happen to me and one of the reasons I stopped flying the aircraft. When you go into a dive, you're diving pretty quickly, you can hear that wind noise rushing past you. You have to be very, very, very careful as you pull up. Any jerks, any slight uh, hard, hard movements, and that happens. And you turn into a very nice uh, World War I lawn dart. Um, this also happens if you uh, use the elevators and the ailerons um, and jerk with them too much, uh, a bit of a problem there. So you have to be very, very smooth with the controls. So it takes a bit of patience that I wasn't really prepared to use when I got started. So here's an example of how the SE5 can uh, engage the, the DR1 and indeed turn with it uh, to some extent. So the first thing I do is to throttle back even before I start diving and push my elevator trim, uh, the stabilizer forward. Um, and you can see using that lag pursuit I then pull in um, for a few of the initial shots. The reason I have the, um, the elevator stabilizer pushed forward is so that if I need to correct I'm doing so with positive G's, so pulling the stick back, not negative G's. Um, these kind of airways get a bit jittery, this kind of aircraft, if you um, try and correct with nose down. So you can see here um, this DR1 is turning. Now at, one thing the SE5 is very good at is turning with bandits at speed. Now you see what I haven't done after this pass is to maintain my turn or throttle back which is the, uh, the instinct of a lot of uh, less experienced pilots and the way I used to fly this aircraft. Um, the way you turn with bandits is you watch as they turn and you come in with them using high yo-yos and pull into them but you don't continue the turn, you pull up again into a high yo-yo as I've done here. So after each attack you're pulling up and you're above the bandit. Um, now this is one of the problems in multiplayer you can sometimes find is that you see here this uh, DI1, DR1, uh, the engine's been hit, it's leaking fuel and it's going to go down uh, very shortly. Um, if there's any other friendly aircraft around they might butt in and try and uh, get an easy kill. That's frustrating. I'm afraid that's just one of the things you'll have to um, live and bear uh, if you want to fly uh, the SE5. Um, so here we go, one last pass and his engine's popped out. But even so here, I pull up again into that high yo-yo. So there he is, hitting the water splash, um, and that is one of the best ways, or I've found, of engaging the DR1 with the SE5. So here we go again, engaging a D7F, one of the most toughest opponents to engage in the game in the SE5. I have started above the D7. Never ever engage in low altitude, Mick Manick again, uh, the Great War Born Ace, um, as I've said before, always above, seldom from, um, from the, the level and never from below. So I throttle back, I push that elevator trim forward, the uh, stabilizer and um, use lag pursuit pulled in, and I've hit his engine and his fuel tank in the first pass. This obviously takes practice, um, I've been practicing quite a lot on quick missions. Um, and now again here I'm watching him turn, but I'm not diving back in until I feel comfortable I'm going to get a good pass on him. So I let him pass underneath me, um, and he pulls up into me. Now here I don't engage. A lot of pilots again here, if they were uh, impatient, would probably go in there to attack as they come towards you. But head on attacks, that gives them a chance to hit you and you'll probably miss them. So they're turning here, but you see I'm using my speed and turning with him at speed. 
but as you notice here I'll let him whiz past me and I'll pull up again into that high yo-yo. If you're not sure what a high yo-yo is, this is a high yo-yo. So again he's turning but I'm coming down with speed and I can turn with him when I have that energy. Uh, I burn off the energy um, uh, in the turn but I don't continue to burn, I pull up again to save some up. So here I just rinse and repeat. Uh, a few deflection shots here, yes you may have to make some tough deflection shots um, but it usually gives you a, a second or two's worth of burst, but a burst uh, on the bounded. So now he's done for. Again, um, it's not a very quick engagement. It's not like sitting on their tail if you were in, say, a sop with camel um, or in the sop with pup. Um, it's making multiple passes. Arguably, he was done for in that first pass. Um, if I'd left him long enough, eventually he'll have run out of fuel. But I just wanted to demonstrate how you can turn with that D7 even if you don't hit them and kill them in the first pass. Um, I've been reading some comments um, on lines and forums about uh, uh, SE5 pilots saying that they need to then disengage. Well, generally, as long as you keep bo uh, booming, uh, as long as you keep a high yo-yoing, um, you don't have to get into any sort of turn situation where you need to disengage. So here, he's pretty much had it, so I'm feeling comfortable sitting on his tail and putting in some final rounds to finish off his engine. So there we go. That is claiming a D7F um, in the uh, FC5A. It's, it's a very, very elegant form of energy fighting. Um, very, very different way of engaging than uh, any of your fighters like uh, the, uh, the Sopper Camel or the Pup. Um, so if you do have a D7F coming for you at co altitude, uh, you can't outclimb them. They have a better, uh, very, very good climb and they have a much better performance when they're higher up than you. Just, it's just one of those things. Sometimes in multiplayer, if I see a D7F coming towards me when I'm in the SE5, I'll just turn around. The advantage you do have in the SE5 um, is a very good speed. It is the fastest plane in the game, particularly at low altitude. Um, and I believe it was one of the fastest planes in the First World War. Um, so uh, there are some other things I'm not so happening with the modeling um, in, in the game. As I say, those wings just can't take any g-forces at all but um you know it's the game and we have to play with what we've got so my checklists one get above them two set your stabilizer so that you you correct by pulling through three boom with lag pursuit four use high yo-yos and turn into the bandit but pull up if you can't get a shot on yo-yo again and disengage if you're co-altitude with low energy um, do not fight them uh, where they, they have strengths. Make sure you are always fighting uh, where you have the advantage. Um, again, take some patience. So my advice for anyone who wants to learn the SE5, two things. First of all, learn where that critical point is where you're going to whip, rip off the wings. Get used to learning what kind of stresses you can put on those wings. Yes, I know it's not historically uh, accurate, but neither is respawning, so get over it. Um, the second thing is practice on quick missions. Use the quick mission, starting above a bandit. Um, the best way to practice is in a DR1, an expert DR1, an ace, um, and learn how to use that high yo-yo to uh, get into their turn. You can briefly turn with any aircraft in, with the SE5 if you have the speed advantage. So yes, I love the SE5. I've fallen in love with it again. I'm glad I put in the time and I hope you do too. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, good to see you again and see you in the skies.